Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. It is a bright sunny day here in St. Louis. Spring is in the air and I just feel energized and kind of just like ready to have a fun day of antiquing. I've shown you a couple antique stores here and there, but I've never actually taken you guys around some of my favorite antique stores in St. Louis and kind of done a whole video on it. Now there are a ton of antique stores vintage stores, thrift stores, everything in St. Louis. This was historically one of the major spots for mid-century modern, so there's a ton of that type of design here, as well as like literally everything else. And I just love that I live in a city that has such deep history and lots of old things to rummage through. So we're gonna be going to a couple different spots today, but we're gonna start at Treasure Isle Antique Store. And then right across the parking lot is another one called Big Ben Antique Market, I think it's called. These two are definitely more home focused. And then I wanna go to one that has a really good variety of home and clothing because I love a mix of both. A couple specific things I'm looking for are like spring items, pants, I desperately need pants, a rug for our dining room, some dining chairs, a console table. We'll see if we find those. Specific items can be really hard to find, but I'm gonna keep an open mind and we're just gonna have a fun day of antiquing together and just kind of like bumming around the St. Louis antique stores. So let's do it. This Lucite table, $25. It comes with like a little magazine rack in there. I just like don't know where I'd put it, honestly. I have a thing for like chrome and brass furniture pieces. And I remember seeing this last time I was here and I'm just surprised it hasn't sold yet. I think it's so fun just mixed with other pieces. If you do something with like wood and kind of like bring the chrome like down a little bit, if that makes sense, but I love it. This booth always has amazing art. It's like way too expensive for me. This one's $16,000. Yes, you heard that right, $16,000. This one is $1,600. Still very much so out of my price range. But I love the pieces. Like, look at the colors of that one. I've been looking for some good art, but it's just, you know, it's so expensive. It's so expensive, especially with... You know, we're still renting, and oh my gosh, look at this one. Little hot cross buns. So cute. That would be so cute in a kitchen. That was not bad. It was like one something. But, you know, it's just hard to invest in art when you don't have a permanent living space. Check out this brass sculpture. Oh my. Actually deceased. I would like to know who's coming to an antique store and just casually dropping $27,000 on a piece of art. Like, who? This booth always has some really, really great textiles. Look at all this vintage fabric. She has like a bunch of like wall hangings. It's like good fabric if you need to use something for a project. Or a new jewelry box or just something to organize my jewelry better. This one's really cool. It's a loose site, but I think I don't want this brown color. These are really cool. I feel like these would be really cool in like a small space, maybe in like a hallway or something. I love them as a set. to like hold my masks and like sunglasses or jewelry. I have one that I got from the Nashville flea market right in my entryway and I use it to just hang up my masks and my sunglasses right when I come in. This I actually saw on my friend's Instagram story. She got 
one of these. It's an old wallpaper roller. So they would like print the wallpaper using this roller and they've started making these into lamps. So you can like repurpose them and this will be like the base of the lamp, but super, super cool. They love these side tables and they'd be really cool like in a unique area. Like if you had just kind of like a weird space in your house, $145 for the pair. I could wallpaper our rental, I would. And this vintage roll is $40. Look how pretty it is. Let us not forget that this is also the place that my friend and I found the mouse that was like running around the antique store. You never know what you're gonna find. I'm working on redecorating my dining room right now and it's been a long process because I've just been holding off on you know finding the perfect pieces and I love this. Pot. It's beautiful. This is two hundred dollars, <laughs> and I cannot spend that much money on a pot. This marble coffee table is beautiful. It's solid marble. Though. These chairs are a pretty color. They have like such nice legs. I would tear off the skirt to make them look a little bit more modern, but they're in really good condition. I love the velvet. But we have hit the jackpot, guys. Did you guys know the Budweiser factory is in St. Louis? Big, big Bud people here. <laughs> I love this is all St. Louis. People are so prideful to live here and I love it. You literally can't make this shit up. Oh, I've been looking for a pair of legs. It's one of my favorite booths. They have a bunch of like postmodern stuff. Really, really well curated. Actually, the only clothing booth in here, and they specialize in kind of like military, utility style t shirts, denim. It's a really, really good spot for that stuff. Levi's orange tab. Look at the fade on them. But I think they're gonna be like one size too big. I left empty handed from Treasure Isle. They had so much good stuff, but just nothing I was looking for today. And honestly, that is the reality of antiquing. Honestly, it's just like the experience for me. I don't know about you guys. This one is definitely less crowded, less stuff. I'm like whispering because I feel like my voice is echoing in here. I haven't had as much luck here as Treasure Isles, but it's right across the street, so I always stop. We are at stop three. I took a little lunch break, got a little Taco Bell. Honestly, my perfect day is Taco Bell and antiquing. So there you go. I'm living a life of luxury. This next stop is probably my absolute fave vintage antique market for furniture. It's called Green Shag Market. It's super well curated. I will definitely say that the prices are higher just depending on the piece you're looking for because they're just super, super high quality pieces. Definitely a step up from the last two stops we went to. But Green Shag also has a lot more vendors that are selling clothes. So we'll be able to look at clothes and furniture, homewares. I'm excited. It's been a while since I've been in here and I, it's just my favorite place to look around, honestly. I love this light picture and I love that chair. One booth that has clothing. 
I immediately want to look at these overalls. They're way too big though. I'm looking for a good pair of vintage overalls. And I just can never find them in my size. They're really big. But I am looking for pants. These are a little too wintry for me. Definitely for a little bit more like a spring. Spring. This is really cool. I kind of love this. It's a red bandana handmade robe. I think I might try this. How incredible is this? Blue leather with all this embroidery design. I don't know if I'm completely full length wear, but what do we think? I think it's pretty cool. It's bandana material and then it's like quilted, handmade. Honestly, I would just wear it like this, like with jeans and a white tee, some sneakers. I really like it. I love these chairs. If there were four of them, I would 1000% get them for my dining table because I would love to find something that's a little bit more colorful or either black, <laughs> which are two opposite things, but I'm just struggling to find like four matching vintage chairs. This booth too. I've looked at this for a long time. It's, it's like a textile piece. Really cool. I love this light fixture. This would make amazing nightstand lamps. Green Shag does the mid-century Danish really well like their stuff here is beautiful it's very expensive twelve hundred dollars for this set but like it's just in impeccable condition green shag does the mid-century danish really well like their stuff here is beautiful it's very expensive twelve hundred dollars for this set but like it's just in impeccable condition I'm gonna check out. I'm just getting this like robe quilted jacket thing and then we're gonna head to our last stop. Fourth and final stop, the Hill Antique Market. So a little backstory about the Hill. It is one of the oldest Italian neighborhoods still in existence in the US. It is full of Italian immigrants who have created amazing restaurants, shops, bakeries, just literally anything you can imagine. And it is seriously one of my favorite parts about St. Louis and this is one of the only vintage stores or antique malls in the hill and it's kind of a newer stop and it's absolutely one of my favorites. They have some really, really good vintage clothing vendors. We're gonna check it all out. site umbrella stand i've never seen anything like this the price reflects that but it's really cool do you guys remember last time i was here with my mom during thanksgiving i tried this on it still hasn't sold 
A good little tip for antique markets is a lot of times the booth owners will like make a deal with you. So if you come and you see something that's been here for a while, you can go to the front uh, cash register and tell them that you want to make an offer on something and they'll let the seller know. And the seller will either, you know, accept, decline, counter, but you can always do that, which is a really good little tip to know because I've seen that jacket around since November and they've already marked it down which means nobody's wanting to buy it and I'm sure that they would probably give a deal for it if you you know offered them something that they were willing to take or if not then you know no harm done they'll counter or just decline I guess I come to this antique market so much that now they know me. So they're like, hey, you wanna see all the new booths? And he was like, showing me around. This is why this is like my favorite spot is because I just, I don't know, I feel like weirdly at home here and just like I know where everything is and like they know who I am and I know, that's nice. But I'm in one of my favorite uh, clothing booths now. It's called Assassin Vintage. And this is where I got that like incredible matching 70s set. I'll insert a photo of it here and I picked up some other things from them but I just love this spot. Look how cool this lamp is. It's like a big ass palm tree. I love this club chair. How amazing is that color? We're going into what is my favorite booth here. The Rada Vintage booth. She has all of this denim, tops, jackets, skirts. She has an array of accessories and shoes. She has all of these like vintage robes and like nightwear. So beautiful. Lots of bags. Sweaters, jackets. material isn't that a cool painting i also love this like a nautical kind of style mirror i think this could be so cool like on a door i know the owner of this booth just via instagram and i love her style it's bep b-e-p interiors bep interiors and she just has like the greatest curated space i love it I'm definitely gonna keep this in mind for my dining room. The colors are perfect. This is called the heirloom room and I just love all of the herbs and flowers like just hanging from here <laughs> brand new coat it's actually been a couple days and i have worn this like multiple days in a row because it actually goes with so many things i'm really glad i ended up picking this up it was the only item that i left with and i'm totally okay with that i definitely had a realization when i was going through my closet a couple weeks ago that i just had so much stuff that 
I never should have purchased in the first place. And it is very difficult for me to say no at a thrift store. And especially when I have a YouTube channel where my videos like rely on me essentially thrifting all the time and like bringing home new stuff. So I'm really proud of myself that I only brought home one thing this amazing coat. Before I show you the whole outfit though, I have an unrelated just like update on my channel. I just wanna say I'm sorry that I haven't been posting as consistently as I used to. This year has been absolutely crazy with moving to a new city. I've grown a lot in my nine to five job and have a lot more responsibility and a lot more travel obligations. And also I've just realize that sometimes I just need to give myself a break. And if I am feeling really burnt out, then I just need to like skip doing a video that week, um, which is very, very, very difficult for me to do. I feel very much so like I am like lazy or failing you guys in some way, but if anything, like the past two years have definitely taught me that I need to put my mental health first. So I really want to stay as consistent as possible. And my goal is always to post a weekly Sunday video, but sometimes it just isn't in the cards if I'm traveling or just have like too much going on in my personal life. So I'm trying. I appreciate all of you guys who watch my videos and stick around, even though it's not always like the most consistent as it, you know, used to be. Oh, and one other update. I actually got a new camera and microphone like a couple weeks ago. So I'm still trying to figure out how it works. So I apologize if any like audio or video is like off in this video because I'm still working through it, but we'll get there. So I have the quilted jacket on. It's technically a robe, but like I'm not gonna wear it as a robe. I'm just gonna wear it as like a cool quilted jacket. These are super popular right now. I see them on like, far-fetched shop bop for hundreds of dollars and I paid 55 for this. I love that it's this bright red bandana print. I think this would look amazing with just a white t-shirt and light wash jeans, some sneakers or boots, but I have these quilted pants that I got years ago, like way before the quilt trend was like super popular and I love them. They almost look like a skirt, but they're pants. I paired these taller thrifted boots because these are like a crop pant, so I wanted to cover up the ankle. It snowed today in March, so I needed to dress warm. Did this tight chocolate brown, it's called like the tissue paper turtleneck from J. Crew. I thrifted this one, and I just really like it because it's super thin, great for layering. I paired this little hat on it to kind of bring some of the color in the pants up top. I feel like this looks so like New York street style or something like you would see somebody wearing this. I think that they paid so much money for it. That's the end of today's video. I hope you enjoyed coming antiquing with me. I had so much fun. It was just a chill, good day. You can like, comment, and subscribe if you liked this video. And you can also follow me over on Instagram at TaylorMadeStyle. 